morning, guys. Good morning. It's Monday, guys. God is good. Coming on so we can do Bible study. Just um, drop my son to school. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. So, guys, um, today, let me go to my notes. Bear with me a second. I just turned the radio down. Let's go to our notes. We're in Exodus, guys. We're almost halfway done with Exodus, guys. We also have prayer line this morning at 8, 8 a.m. prayer call. It's like, I have 15 minutes, so I want to spend this time just reading, reading, um, doing Bible study this morning. Come on, notes. Bear with me one second, guys. I believe this is day nine. We're on day nine of our December Bible study for um, the book of Exodus. Now, this is crazy. I know I write a lot, but yeah. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, we're on day um, nine today, Exodus 17 and 18. Yesterday, we read about manna and quail, and uh, we also read about some other things. We read about um, the Song of Moses and Miriam, um, the waters of Mara and Elam. So today, we're going to be reading about water from the rock, the Malachites defeated, and Jethro visits Moses. That's what we're going to be talking about today. This is day nine. Um, we're going to go up into day 20. And that's going to conclude Exodus, then day 21 and 22. We'll be reading Habakkuk, um, the four chapters in the intro and outline. So God is good. So Lord, we ask that you bless this Bible study. Bless each and every one of us in a special way today and this week. I have already prayed for you guys as well early this morning. Um, in Jesus Christ's name, God, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your angels that are on assignment, God. Jesus name amen so water from the rock the whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded they camped at um, Rephidim but there was no water for the people to drink so they quarreled with Moses and said give us water to drink Moses replied why do you quarrel with me why do you put the Lord to the test and if you go back and prior days before and what we just recently read you'll see why you know he's he's kind of saying this but the people were thirsty verse 3 written on for water there and they grumbled against Moses they said why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst then Moses cried out to the Lord what am I to do with these people they are almost ready to stone me have any of you gone through a um, similar Moses experience not the same the same like how he went through but you went through it where people were pulling on you and you're trying to do what God has called you to do maybe some of you in leadership or ministry or just like leading your family or you're the one that people can depend on and they look to for encouragement but really they're depending on the God in you and you, you instead of you know them being grateful they're grumbling and complaining there is no thanks to God it's only when God is working for them what was your situation like there are some things I could give you with wisdom with that and those type of people. But what were some things that you learned in your own experience with that, if, if that is your situation? So, the Lord answered Moses, walk on ahead of the people. Somebody catch that. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the now and go. Exodus 17 verse 5 will help many of you if that is your situation that we just were talking about a little while ago. So I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Masa and Marabah. Because Masa means testing and Marabah means quarreling. Right? Because the Israelites quarrel and because they tested the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? And God is among us. You know, sometimes we go through situations and seasons and circumstances like, God, where are you? But he's right there. Especially when you have seen the power of God in him move for you mightily and you know he's there. Don't allow the enemy or people or circumstances or your situation or even your own flesh and emotions to make you not remember how good God is and how good God has been in your life okay so that's water from the rock let me know what you thought about it what did you get out of it now we're going to talk about the Amalekites defeated and I'm going to try to be off in the next maybe 10 minutes or so 10 to 12 minutes so the Amalekites are about to be defeated they're defeated the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. Oh, 
we're going to be coming. Um, let me release this before I forget. For January, for our Bible study, we're going to be coming from the Psalms. But we will not be doing the Psalms on the YouTube channel. We're going to be doing like the weekly um, videos. Like I told you guys, we talked about this before some months ago. One month it'll be, we'll be talking about Thanksgiving. But one week it'll be Mercy. One week Grace Favor. We'll be doing it like that. And then we'll also be doing our um, January Bible, um, not Bible studies, our eighth mini series, What Is. And we'll be looking at different things like what is faith what is love what is these different things we'll be doing that but for our um like how we're doing these youtube bible studies i've been announcing it for many months now so you guys already know this um like how we've been doing our youtube bible studies up underneath this playlist for the last um about year and two months or so or a little bit over a year and two months we're going to be transitioning to the prayer line we're going to be doing live bible studies so just how you guys are interacting and emailing me and texting me and in the comments we're going to be on live doing these together we're going to be reading together we're going to be sharing together it's going to be live and we're going to be coming from the psalms is what I know so far for the month of January. Now, I don't know if we're going to read all of the Psalms, but I know we're going to be coming from the Psalms for our Bible study, but it will be transitioned to the prayer line. And then the YouTube channel, I'm going to be releasing videos as God at least, but I can tell you guys it will not be how it's been these last almost three years, but I will be still coming on doing them. So I just want to say that so that I don't forget. And so you guys kind of have an idea of how the Bible study would be for January. But everything else I think I had already mentioned to you guys. So let's um kind of close with this chapter and then we'll move on to 18. So listen, so the Malachites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Mal he fought the Amalekites and we read some stories about him, right? As Moses had ordered and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. Come on, who in your camp is fighting for you and not against you? Who in your camp knows how to fight for you in prayer and, and, and spiritual warfare and with the word of God knows how to cover you, keep you covered with the blood of Jesus, pray over you, encourage you, strengthen you, be there for you physically? Who in your camp is a Joshua? Who in your camp is a Moses? Who in your camp is an Aaron? Who in your camp is a her? I even want to ask you this question. Are you a Joshua? Are you a Moses? Are you an Aaron? Are you a her? Do you have the spirit and the anointing that God placed on them amen so as long as moses held up his hands the israelites were winning but whenever he lowered his hands the melakites were winning come on god will give you favor with himself and man we need god but god has us in certain relationships with certain people for a reason he has them to be blessings to us and us to be blessings to them no man is supposed to be an island and isolated all their life. Like I told you guys before in prior videos, thank you, Lord. There are going to be some situations and circumstances where we do go through isolated seasons. But it's not to be like that throughout your whole life, especially not as a Christian, because God is a God of people, covenant, community. Amen. But our trust is supposed to ultimately be in God. Amen. So, um, so when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Right, because whenever he his hands were held up, right as as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Malachites were the Malachites were winning. When Moses' hands were tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and her held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other. Come on, somebody say, "I receive my divine support." Not only should you receive your divine support. You should ask God for you to be divine support in the lives of people that he has connected you to. It could be someone in your own community. It could be someone in your own family. It could be a brother. It could be a sister. It could be your best friend. It could be, excuse me, even the spouse. Whoever it is, it could be even business related, marketplace related, job related, whatever it is, ministry, whatever it is. Divine support. Amen. All this that we've been reading about with this exodus is divine orchestration from God. Amen. So, um, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So this battle took a while. It wasn't just like a quick hour battle, 20 minutes, 30 minutes till sunset. So it, it took a while. So Joshua overcame the Malachite army with the sword. You got to use your physical sport, your physical sword and no one take this out of context in your spiritual sword. The word of God, Ephesians 16 through 18, the full arm of God. We talked about that, prayed it, talk, talked about it, read it, you know, different, um, Weapons that you can use, rest, belief, faith, hope, love, prayers, fasting, praising, seed, sowing, encouraging, 
unity, all these different things we talked about. What is your sword? What is the thing that God has put in your hand for you to defeat your Amalekites, so to speak, in your life? So then the Lord said to Moses, write this on the scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And that is a word for someone, Exodus 17, 14. 15 reading to 16. Moses built an altar and called it the Lord is my banner. Right? We've talked about the names of God. We've done videos on the names of God. Um, and even with this series, um, not this series, this Bible study um, teaching with this month, I even gave you guys some of the names of God and different things. But the Lord is my banner is one of the, the names of God. He said, for hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Malachites from generation to generation. Amen. So let me know what you guys got out of on that. The Malachites defeated out of all of Exodus 17. Now we're going to close with Exodus 18. Jethro visits Moses. Okay. Now remember we read about, um, you know, him when he left, when he fled from Egypt and he left and he went to the land of Midian. Remember he married Zipporah and this is um, Jethro that we read about. So we're going to he hear a little bit more about him in this chapter. Because he's visiting him now. Some time have passed. Now Jethro the priest of Midian and father-in-law of Moses. Right. Heard of everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel. And how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Because remember going back. He was asking um, when he went to him. Um, he said um, you know let me go. You know. And um, he let him He let him go. Because you, you learned about um, Jethro in Exodus 3 with Moses in the burning bush. And also, you um, hear about him, um, I believe, in Exodus 2. I really don't have the time to really look at it too much today. But I know definitely it's in 3. Okay, so um, anyway, he has heard of everything God has done for Moses and for his people Israel and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro received her and her two sons. One son was named Gershom. Right, and Gershom sounds like the Hebrew for an alien there, and then um, his other son is Eleazar, which means my God is my God is helper. Okay, so one son was named Gershom. For Moses said, "I have become an alien in a foreign land." Who does that remind you of? Kind of reminds me of Abraham. Kind of reminds me of Joseph, but God was still with them nevertheless. Right, and the other was named Eleazar. For he said, "My father's God was my helper. He saved me from the sword of Pharaoh." Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' sons and wife came to him in the desert where he was camped near the mountain of God. So you got Jethro, which is his, his father-in-law. You got his two kids, Gershom and Eleazar, and you have his wife, Zipporah, right? They came where he was camped near the mountain of God. They came to him in the desert where he was camped near the mountain of God. Jethro has sent word to him, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And you know this is a word for someone. Really, this is a word for us all. When you are... um seeking after God you're seeking after him you're doing your best you love him it's about God's strength and you're really pursuing him and putting God first in your life and prioritizing him when you're doing that and you're doing your best to walk in your purpose and follow after God God will make sure that everything and everyone concerning you is taken care of notice that Moses had to come away from that land and go back to the place where he fed from to bring deliverance about for God's people for nations and to change people's lives and to change things that was going on with Israel and all this different stuff. And God is causing his family to come to him. And God is going to bless him in this chapter. We're going to continue reading with wisdom from his father-in-law. You know, and Moses had a family. He could have said, well, God, I got a family. I can't just leave my family. I got, you know, these people that, these, that God called in the Bible... They had lives, they had jobs, they had careers, they had they had their own will in life before God. And you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but we have a choice. We have free will, we're not robots. We have a choice if we're going to answer the call or not. I have a choice, you have a choice. If you call me right now, I have a choice to pick up for you or not. If I call you right now, you have a choice to pick up or not. That's how God is, he's calling us each and every day. Some of us, he's trying to call us deeper and you and God want to see if you're going to answer the call. Okay, so um, 
I got a few minutes before I got to um, jump on the, the prayer line for this morning. Guys, we only have three prayer line calls left for the remainder of this year up underneath this Uncover Unveiled series. September made a year for this particular prayer call. The other prayer call was a different line and a, a different time, but it's been a year so September. So it's been October, November, December for like a year, three months consistently every week with the calls, two, three times a week with the calls. So we have three more calls left up underneath this Uncover Unveiled series. December 20th is our um, Fire Phone Prayer Conference. We did one last month. We also did one, I believe, in September. We're doing another. We're doing our last one this month. And then we are going to be praying towards like the end of the month. We're getting ready to cross over for January. I'm on the Gregorian calendar. Okay. So, um, Seven. So let's close with this. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and about all the hardships they had met along the way and how the Lord had saved them. Jethro was delighted to hear about all the good things he all the good things, I'm sorry, the Lord had done for Israel in rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. He said, praise be to the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh and who rescued the people from the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods, little G, for he did this to those who had treated Israel arrogantly. 12. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' his father-in-law in the presence of God. Somebody say, in the presence of God. And that's a word for someone, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God is what you need. We've talked about before how you don't have to go outside of outside of God. Everything you need is in Him. Just seek His presence. Seek Him. For just Him. Amen. So then, and then he will give you beyond what you need. Look at that Matthew six thirty three, that Philippians four, that um, that Psalms one, all these blessings. Isaiah one nineteen. Right. So the next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father in law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, "Now these are a lot of people. It's not a little bit of people." You know, a few people right now could just possibly get on your nerves because you're human, you know, but these are like thousands and thousands, like millions of people, a million people. It's, it's a lot of people that he's having to carry and deal with and lead and God. And this is only one person that God is using. And yes, God has assigned divine people to him to help him, you know, like his brother and Miriam and all these other elders and stuff. But this is a lot for him because mostly people are going to really look to him. Because God is the one who called him to go back and get, you understand what I'm saying? So listen, so here's the wisdom. So the next day Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people and they stood around him from morning to evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone? I'm sorry, why do you alone sit as judge? While all the people stand around you from morning to evening. So he's dealing with these people problems, these people burdens, these people complaints, whatever they're dealing with from morning to evening, just dealing with this. Amen. Moses answered him because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and laws. Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. Basically, it's not wise. Because it's going to wear him out and he's giving him wisdom. And this is a word for someone. It may be different, a different balance for you. But nevertheless, you need to create some form of balance and boundary. Okay. So what he said, Mo, what you are doing is not good. He basically was like, this is not good for you. It's not wise. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. Listen now to me and I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. And wisdom, we did a lot of teachings on wisdom and godly counsel and advice. Talking about that in Proverbs as well, right? You must be the people's reverence. And we're going to be reading more about Proverbs. I know we did a Proverbs series, but we're going to be reading a few more chapters of Proverbs as well. I don't know if it's going to be this month or next month, but I know God showed me to be reading that. So I'm going to seek him on that and then I'm going to be... Um, going as follows so look you must be the people's representative before god and bring their disputes to him let's do 20 through 27 and we'll close with this yeah because it's a few minutes over like three minutes over I'm about to go on now after i read this 
So bring their disputes to him. Teach them the decrees and laws and show them the way to live and the duties they are to perform. But, somebody say but. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Everybody's not supposed to be in leadership. Everybody's not supposed to be going to for counsel, wise counsel, wisdom, people that have integrity, people that have honor. Look, trustworthy men who fear God, who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them, right? So some is going to be over 1,000, some is going to be over 100, some is going to be over 50, some is going to be over 10. But whatever God position you and have you over that, he has you in that position for a reason. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the screen and all these people will go home satisfied. And doesn't that sound like a lot of wisdom to you guys? Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way and Jethro returned to his own country. Lord's will tomorrow on day 10. We're talking about um, at Mount Sinai. And the Ten Commandments in 20 and idols and altars. I pray you guys was blessed by our Monday morning Bible study. You guys have an awesome sauce day. God bless.